You're watching Telecom TV from the MEF annual members meeting in Boston. And I'm joined now by David Ball, who is senior architect with Cisco. David, thanks for joining us on, on Telecom TV. Now, as I understand, you're, you're, you're leading out on the MEF's work on IP service attributes. That's right, yeah. So what do we define as IP services, first of all? Well, so, so IP services are, are you know, obviously very widespread in the industry. Um, and and I, I guess we typically break them down, as, as we do for carry Ethernet services, into two types. We have subscriber services that are end-to-end, -end, uh, things like VPN services and internet access. And then we have wholesale operator services, which are, are more access services for in, in, inter-provider services. And how do these differ from carry Ethernet services? So at a very high level, they're, they're very similar. We define services in terms of the attributes mm -hmm. that are agreed between the service provider and the subscriber. Uh, the differences are mostly when you get into the details. So, for example, one thing we found is that for IP services, the service uh, typically includes some form of shaping for uh, QoS, whereas for carry Ethernet, it, it does not. Um, another difference is for IP services, there are some sort of constructs that don't have uh, analogies in carry Ethernet, so things like extra nets and uh, cloud access services where there isn't really a carry Ethernet uh, equivalent. So, so th these are the, the, the attributes that, that, that need to be defined, um, and these are going to be defined between the service provider and the customer? That's right, yes. So, so the way MEF defines services is always in terms of what has to be agreed between the two parties. So we're not uh, thinking about what actually gets configured in devices, we're thinking about at a, at a business level, what are the things that, that need to be agreed. And what potential use cases are we looking at? So for subscriber services, I guess there's three main use cases. So the main one is, is IPVPNs uh, for, for enterprises or organizations. Um, another one is, is internet access, um, and, and you know, that's both residential internet access and also enterprise internet access. Uh, and the final one, which I guess is a, a, a newer technology, is, is the direct cloud access to private clouds. So uh, things like Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud, uh, service providers want to provide a direct connection for their subscribers. Uh, rather than connecting through the internet. And well, what's the advantage of doing that, of this direct connection? So the, 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 the advantage is uh, better performance and better assurance, uh, so better quality of service and, and better reliability. And, and ensuring full service assurance is, is one of the, one of the uh, main absolutely. thrusts yes. of the MEF's work. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes. so you know, it's all part of the third network vision of, of agile, orchestrated and assured. It's the, it's the assured part that, that is really key there. So what exactly is the MEF doing on IP service attributes? What was the nature of the work? So uh, it, it's really the first step of a, of a whole progression, and, and it's the same progression we did for KR Ethernet. We start by defining the attributes. Uh, from the attributes, we can define services, and we can form an information model um, from that data models, APIs. And really, the end goal is orchestration. Um, it, it's, it, it's to fold the IP services into the LSO architecture that we published as MEF55 uh, just a few months ago. Which brings me on to timelines. We've, we've, just, <laughs> just, we've just made that, that we just published um, those guidelines a few months ago. But what, what timelines are you now working towards? So the service attributes work itself. Uh, I think we've made great progress. We've been going for two quarters. Uh, we've had great participation from both vendors and, and service providers. Um, we're, we're hoping to complete the work by the end of next year uh, and, and publish the first specifications on that. And I think some of those follow-on steps that I mentioned, the service definitions and the info model will probably start even before we've, we've finished. So hopefully we can move for a standards body quite quickly. Excellent, that's fascinating. David, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome.